Yeah, people always ask, what do you think you're going to look like in 10 years? How's that look? <laughs> All right, well, we're just going to park this thing over here and zoom it in a little bit. And I'll get in the fucking frame because we're going to do a little extra, extra this week because I got nothing to fucking do. Um, actually, I'm just, uh, I'm waiting for the proof for Grindhouse Resurrection number four, which is going to be 144 pages, which will be available online. And the uh, problem is, with 144 pages, I couldn't use the local printer. So I'm forced to use these money-grubbing, devil-worshipping scumbag corporations. So be that as it may, it's being worked on. So until I figure out when and where I'm going to get that in, I got nothing to do except watch some cool movies. So also I'd like to give a shout out to my uh, adopted daughter, Serena, who's going through some tough times right now. I'm here for you if you need me. And um, my... Uh, transgendered friends that have taken some shit right now, Candy, Lily, and a few other people, and a lot of other people are going through some shit. And I don't understand it, but it's the nature of whatever happens here. But anyway, let's go back to a something weird double feature. And we're going to start out with Mr. Mari's Girls from 1967. Mr. Mari is a complex human being. He's obviously very wealthy and he lives in a mansion and it opens this thing with him explaining that he takes care of his girls. One who's a hot blind who's reclining on a sofa and he's telling her that she has to pretty much get out of there because someone else is coming over. Well, there's this housewife that comes over and confesses to Mr. Marty about gambling problems and getting involved with a gangster and basically paying off the vig and pussy. Well, Mr. Mary doesn't want to hear this shit. Basically peels off the $700 that she's owed and handed to her. See, Mr. Marty's sort of like, you know, I, remember, I don't know if any of you guys remember a TV show in the 50s called The Millionaire, where a guy would show up to some undeserving slob and give him a million dollars, and we'd all sit back and watch him fuck up. Well, something like that, or more like, almost like a Rod Serling type thing where he appears. So maybe you consider this one the Twilight Zone of twat, for lack of better words. But anyway, that's the first girl. Uh, the second girl is a junkie who has basically burned her source and is about to get a hot shot and something clicks in her mind and runs off. And of course she runs back to Mr. Mari who basically straightens her out, cleans her up, lets her shower and hang out. Uh, girl number three is a high school chick that obviously uh, did some after-school endeavors, which got her knocked up, and of course, Mr. Mari will take care of that, too. Boots has just decided to join us, ladies and gentlemen. Don't know why. It's not dinner time yet. No, no food yet. You're a good girl, but no food yet. Got a while. So anyway, he takes care of that, and then um, another girl comes in, a pretty much hardcore lesbian, whose girlfriend is blind and she wants to marry her, and whatever was going on, Mr. Uh, Mari decides he will perform the nuptials because he's an ordained minister. So this all ends with all the girls showing up in some huge cat fight, which pretty much they're all laying on the floor, and Mr. Mari leaves by dropping a whole bunch of money on top of the not moving naked bodies. So kind of a teaser here, um, you know, it's an interesting little thing, and it's kind of quirky. Um, I guess it ran the adults-only circuit back in the 60s. With 67, I would have been... Shit. Uh, not that not old enough to go over there and watch that, that's for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm really sad that I missed some of this stuff in the actual theaters, though. So, our second feature... And I, did, I really expected a lot from this, Tortured Females. And I got it. It stars uh, Denine Du Bois who this thing opens up with, uh, what the hell, how do you say her name? Deneen, okay, with Deneen crawling out a window of an old farmhouse with one very nice tit sticking out. And she's being chased by this big ugly guy, um, and then all of a sudden there's a sheriff's car there, and she runs up to the sheriff's car, again, with one very nice tit hanging out. And she explains to the sheriff how all this horrible shit happened. The sheriff basically just stands there through the whole thing going, hmm, with his mustache. Maybe smelling his finger, I don't fucking know. But anyway, it ends up, you know, it starts off with Deneen and her girlfriend reading about this Hollywood strangler. 
our hillside strangler or whatever, and then um, she's going to go for a ride to visit her aunt in the country, and we have an elaborate, really long, getting, you know, almost a reverse striptease. She starts out naked and then gets dressed, and we get to watch it. So then this hot blonde decides to drive out into the country, and guess what? She's on a deserted country road, and she runs out of gas. Insert dumb blonde joke here. Well, luckily, she bought her sneakers so she can walk, and she finds this creek, and she gets naked in the creek, and she's spied on by this guy, Cowboy Clint, who picks her up in the truck and starts taking her to this farmhouse, and then basically, in a really rough scene, rapes her. And basically, this is a white slaver's operation. She is brought in, thrown in a dungeon. There's another girl named Magna, I think, who's a hardcore lesbian who beats her up. Um, she's slapped around a lot. There's visible blood. I mean, it doesn't look like this is, you know, it, it's, so, it's so awkward, it doesn't even look like it's staged. It looks like it's fucking real, falling down and shit. The head bad guy's name is Carl. And tell me, is every creepy motherfucker in the world named Carl? Because there's a whole laundry list of villains named Carl in the history of uh, cinema. So anyway, he basically has got her pegged for Mr. Big, who's coming in to check out the merchandise. And when Mr. Big comes into town, the girls are forced to do a go-go dance in front of him. Also, there's a creepy mongoloid hunchback who chatters like a monkey who torments a girl. I mean, this, this really delivers everything it promises and more. So there's a couple different escape plans, and finally... Uh, she gets away, you know, with the sheriff standing there with the one tit out, and the sheriff no, tells her that they know that shit's been going on, and they're going to investigate it. And, uh, okay, more dogs are coming in. Here's Blanca. Say hi, Blanca. You're going to check this out, too? Ah, oh, you're itchy. So, anyway, the sheriff and her drive off to obviously justice be done, and uh, that's the end of our films. Um, this was on a, a torture triple feature from Something Weird video with... Two Girls for a Madman, Mr. Mari's Girls and Tortured Females, which is probably out of print. Maybe you can snag one on eBay, but it's definitely worth a look. Little time capsule of 60s adults-only striptease-type films. So that's our show for today. We'll be back tomorrow with another Wild Road story. So until then, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side as my dogs make themselves comfortable here. Mm.